Let's do some fake news. Just kidding. My name is Mike B, a.k.a. Phony. Today's date is April 17th, 2020. Still on lockdown. It's 3.16 p.m. on a day. I think it's Friday because we're doing news, but that's about all we can really phony news. There you go, Kimo. I like that. That's a good one. Phony news. God damn, we got to do the whole show over again. Shit. Ah, let's go ahead and start things off with uh, with the obvious news stuff. It's kind of things that you expected to happen and are not surprised when they do happen, but technically they make headlines. San Diego Comic Con 2020 is officially canceled due to the coronavirus. <laughs> of course, of course, yes, of, yeah, yeah, that, oh, yeah, duh. It's gonna, of course it's gonna happen. Uh, the notable thing though is that this is the first time that it's closed in its 50 year running. Which, uh, which I think that was the most surprising thing to me because I was like, wow, it's been running for 50 years. I had no idea. I really had no idea. Most conventions end up going through some kind of a rebranding or something. Like, does anybody know what Comdex is? No. <laughs> but do you know what, uh, what CES is? Yes. <laughs> so every th things tend to go through some kind of branding change or something. I don't know if San Diego Comic Con was called something different before, but... You know, um, but now I know why it's, it's so popular. Yeah, it's it's the it's the granddaddy of uh, of uh, of conventions. Now I actually want to go and find out like what is the er the longest running con like a uh, video game slash pop culture related convention that uh, that has not gone through a rebrand. You know, I wonder. Hmm. I'm waiting for the day when the, they started closing events in game and make some lore explanation. <laughs> Somebody made a comment on uh, I think on Twitter. I think it was I'm not sure if it was a viral tweet or if it's a friend or something like that. But they were saying that uh, they can't wait for all of the sitcoms this fall to have the mandatory coronavirus episode where they're now now all these crazy people are all locked into a house together or something you know where they, they can't because they can't go out because of shelter in place because of the coronavirus or because of some new virus thing or whatever i'm sure every episode of every type of episodical tv is going to have the coronavirus episode so basically big brother yeah basically big, real world whatever you know <laughs> it's going to be one of those episodes where they just they can't oh we can't leave so we have to all stay together and try to find some way to get along but hilarity will probably ensue cue laugh track ha <laughs> uh better than mandatory time travel episode <laughs> that's the episode they do when they when they're just like we need to just a filler episode it's like it's it's every every show has one right it's like they get together, they're stuck together because of a storm or something like that. And they're just like, remember the time when, and then they play an old episode and you basically end up watching old episodes. It's kind of like a best of, of old episodes, you know, people still watch TV, a surprising amount of actually in this house alone, there's at least one person who watches a whole lot of TV. It's not me. Uh, <laughs> with the power of friendship. Exactly. COVID is now jumping with the show. It's going to be in everything. It's, it's become, I mean, it's such a big thing. It's basically, yeah, it's, it's permanently ingrained in our, uh, uh, in our culture now. Um, could coronavirus could all, uh, all halt LA concert sporting events until 2021. Well, yeah. Well, that part we knew too. Um, Gilbert, thank you so much. Alerts are off, but thank you. Uh, Twitch is my TV. So it's right. It's Mike and my, my daytime soaps. What, what are the, you know, what's going to happen with some of these shows that have pre-recorded episodes that, uh, well, they, they're going to run out of episodes soon and they can't film because, well, because of the coronavirus. So think shows like, like my personal favorites, Bachelor in Paradise. Do they already film that? I don't know because they always film things like in different, you know, in different seasons and then they bring it in. Like even uh, uh, American Ninja Warrior, they filmed that in the winter. Did they finish filming that before all this stuff happened? I don't know. What about America's Funniest Home Videos <laughs> with Carlton hosting? Like, it, you know, he he walks out every single episode and like slaps hands with everybody and everything. Slap hands, <laughs> slap hands. Uh, he he comes out and he fucking high fives everybody. And <laughs> oh my god, uh, he comes out and he high fives everybody and always says in the corner. He always comes, always says in the corner. It says recorded February fifteenth or something like that, right? Oh, slap hands. Oh my god, I can't believe it. Uh, slap hands, Mike. I know, I know, I know. What was Tommy Boy? No, who was that? I don't even know who it was. <laughs> Fucking. Uh, anyway, so um, for AMV, I wouldn't doubt that they could produce shows for a long time because they get submissions all the time. Uh, yeah, well, they had to do it without. A, with the, the thing is, they have a live studio audience that they always. Water Boy, I think that's what it is. Of course, uh, they they have a um, uh, uh, 
they have a live studio audience. So I, I, I wonder if, I mean, that's just one example, right? Like there's tons of shows that have live studio audiences and you know, yeah, they'll get rid of the studio on it, but we, we haven't gotten to that. What I'm saying is we haven't gotten to that point yet. You know, we haven't gotten to the point to where we have live studio or shows that are running without live studio audiences. And I'm sure it's going to not, not, well, not for everything, but I mean, like there are lots of shows that we're expecting to be released. You know, like I said, Bachelor in Paradise, you know, one of my personal favorites. Um, and yeah, the quarantine is eating at my sanity to become a degenerate like the rest of us. All I could do is just spout old movie quotes and everything. It's all I'm capable of right now. Uh, WWE and AEW are doing it and have for weeks. Yes, but th those are like, th th okay, let, let's, let me, maybe I have to like rephrase that a little bit so that way everybody's on the same page. I'm talking about shows that are pre-recorded over the, over the seasons and then released later. They're packaged and they're sold to a network and then they're, they're released. Shows like reality TV typically are filmed entirely beforehand. For example, uh, the, uh, the Mass Singer. The Mass Singer still has episodes where they are, where they have full crowds of people. We're now months into this thing where they definitely didn't record these things anytime recently. And I'm fairly certain they record those things in Hollywood, which means that they wouldn't have been able to film after March uh, 20 something. Uh, or sorry, uh, uh, beginning of March or so. So we know that that stuff is already t done, packaged, and ready to go. We haven't gotten to the point where we've transitioned from the, uh, in shows like that, which we may not, because maybe they pre-recorded everything. I have no idea. Uh, no more Dancing with the Stars. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Do they film already or do they not film? Uh, but Dancing with the Stars is a live running reality show, whereas uh, The Mass Singer is not. The Mass Singer is pre-recorded um, entirely. The Voice, I don't know what The Voice does, actually. I don't watch The Voice. Uh, I kind of walked, I, I don't really, like, the singing shows, I'm kind of done with that shit. American Idol killed that shit for me. Adam Lambert was the best! And they fucked that up! Anyways, uh, so, <laughs> moving on! <laughs> <laughs> uh, there are some where the finale is done later. That's right. Yeah, that's that's a good. That's 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 uh, that's correct. Actually, Jairo, that's right. He does tour with Queen now. It's probably better off. Most in most cases, the the runner up ended up doing better anyways. Um, when it came to uh, American Idol, um, but then they brought in like Katy Perry. And I was just like, I don't give a shit about. I'm gonna fuck. I had J Lo. I had J Lo. I had I had Steven Tyler. And then I had, I had, uh, 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 what's his name? Is that's going to be a no for me, dog? And I was just like, this is great. This is the, this is, this is, this is the lineup. No Simon, no, none of that shit. It was a good lineup. I mean, whatever. Um, Randy Jackson. Thank you. Anyways, reality TV. Come on, guys. Who watches TV? <laughs> uh, so moving on to China. Uh, <laughs> obviously lots of news coming out of China lately related to fucking everything. Uh, but none of this is related to the coronavirus. I don't think. Let me see. Nope, nope, nope. We're good. All right. So, uh, those of you guys who play games like, uh, Animal Crossing know that it is a vector for, um, for propaganda against the CCP. Things like this. It's terrible. Absolutely terrible. I don't know what this says, but I'm sure it's something that's not good. And then over here, can't believe they would do this. Can't believe they would do this. How dare they get together and do this in a game? So Animal Crossing uh, has somehow managed to trigger the government in China to the point to where they decided uh, they are going to... Lock wait, wait, first off, wait, first off, who are we going to... Where can I get those masks? Like, I have not seen those masks anywhere. Please. What the? Where? <laughs> so, uh, so the, the, the CCP has decided they're going to clamp down on, on gaming in general. They basically are, just to summarize it, they are, they are uh, region locking themselves in basically every game. Now, this is not entirely new news. Right. Like it's new that they are locking basically region locking themselves right now. Uh, but in terms of some of the things that they discuss, they have a pretty strict gaming guidelines to like you can't like, for example, miners can't spend more than a certain amount of money every month or something. Uh, miners also can't play games between 10 p.m. and 8 a.m. Stuff like that. We talked about this before on the show. Um, and uh, and typically with, with games that have a lively uh, internal you know, chat system or something, they have systems in place to monitor what it is that those people say. Uh, and this happens with Riot, this happens with Blizzard, this happens with probably tons of other games that have been granted a permit or a license in order to, uh, or publishing in order to, you know, just basically sell their game in, uh, in China. 
But I guess Animal Crossing got around that somehow by, <laughs> by just allowing pe people the freedom to be able to import their own pictures. As you saw, there was uh, some pictures in there that, uh, that were not necessarily in-game content. This is stuff that they have uh, imported themselves and created, which is very easy to do. Uh, and yeah, Freedom Market shut it down! And so they did, they did. They actually came out and they, they region locked themselves. And it says, on April 10, China banned the popular social simulations video game in which gamers can create a home and interact with cute animal villagers, owing to Hong Kong pro-democracy activist Joshua Wong. So Joshua Wong, and that was actually the tweet that I pulled this from. Uh, he is he is an activist, Hong Kong activist, and he did post this stuff. And because Hong Kong is kind of a part of China, <laughs> depending on who you ask, uh, <laughs> they decided they're going to lock down. Uh, they see this as a threat, and so they decide to lock everything down. Everyone's blaming Joshua Wong for it. Um, there there are a couple other uh, videos that popped up that I, that I thought were pretty coordinated, right? This is uh, Carrie Lam, the uh, uh, is a is a is a president representative of, of Hong Kong. So yeah, they're gonna smack a couple times the thing, and then they're gonna go, they're gonna kick dirt on it and everything like that. Free Hong Kong, revolution now, right? Uh, honestly, I mean, when you think about a platform for, for protest, this is probably the most creative one. This is the most creative one I think I, I've ever seen. <laughs> it's just, it's so well coordinated. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh it's so it's a little it's a little absurd it's a little absurd not not the the protest part but that you know we're at the point where we're going to basically lock everybody down and they're not gonna be able to play with people outside of uh outside of china now obviously every everyone uh who plays games regularly everywhere else uh who has had a negative experience with and we you know we call them china bots um but uh you know there's a number of names for them but typically we we recognize that they are from they are accounts that originate in china uh you know if you had a negative experience with that well you don't have to worry about that anymore at least for the foreseeable future because now they are severed um but it's bad news for like literally every gamer in china which there are a lot of you know this is not this is not the chinese people who are you know, who, who are deserving of any kind of, uh, of punishment for something like this, like Animal Crossing, okay? Uh, but they're the ones getting punished for it, and it's fucked up! It's fucked up! Uh, where did I get my cold from? I mean, yeah, it's, 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 it's true. It's, that's a very real, true thing. Um, you know, the, the, there's all these, uh, there's tons of, of documentaries and articles done, uh, based off of the Chinese gold farming markets, where they'd have like these rooms of people just basically playing games nonstop and just farming money. It's crazy. Uh, people are not always a reflection of the government is in everywhere, not just China. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no, it's true. That, that's, that's why I want to make it a point to make a point of that. Um, so uh, it's, it's, it's looking like, and I, look, I went to find the original source here. Uh, the original source is obviously in Chinese. Uh, there's a couple things here that don't translate well. And one of them is like, I think one of the, one of the things that was mentioned was uh, in one of the articles, I think an article we just read actually, was that the, uh, one of the things they were banning were in-game unions or something that were, that were designed to motivate people to have some kind of dissent towards the government, right? Basically anti-government uh, unions. And union is a strange word for, to use in this context when you think of you know when you when you think of video games like why would you ban a union that's really weird but what i'm what i'm told is that the word guild and union can be sometimes mistaken or when you when you go through an actual translation so uh so guild makes a lot more sense exactly castle okay, so yeah guild so you think guild or clans so like that makes a lot more sense to us initially i was like a union like what the fuck are they are they collecting dues and shit like that doesn't make any sense like and, and are they collecting bells is it like some like ufcw or something like that or <laughs> some like union office in one of if somebody's like you know you know permanently connected uh, a Nintendo Switch running Animal Crossing and they collect dues from people? I don't know. Uh, but yeah, Union sounds funky, but Guild and all that stuff does, that makes a lot of sense. It's like, okay, don't form anti-government guilds and all that stuff. Um, <clears throat> there are no guilds in, in Animal Crossing, but there is best friends list. So, you know, so guilds are unions. Yeah, yeah, good. Um, they're afraid of people forming anti-government groups within the game, using the game as a communication system. Exactly it, exactly. And there, there is plenty of communication you could do in Animal Crossing. Uh, I mean, it's got a full text chat system with chat logs. You can mail people messages. There's, I mean, it, it, it all exists. It's just, it's just as robust as say like World of Warcraft minus the channels, really. Yeah, yeah. Minus, minus like general chat, stuff like that. Um, uh, science gives consent. The people of China need to raise their voice. Uh, guilt is, well, that's, <laughs> we'll see. Uh, but, 
<laughs> but yeah, so they are they they are saying that uh, it says changing skins will suspend publication for six months. There's a whole lot of stuff here. This basically covers all of their gaming publications and everything. This is very poorly translated, by the way. This is Google Translate. It's very poorly translated. Uh, there's a number of other, a number of other things that they they highlight here. They said uh, if for the game that has received the version number, which is typically a number like a license number that allows them to sell a certain game. So like World of Warcraft Classic will be you know Blizzard zero zero seven five, right? Which I don't know if that's the, the way they format their numbering. I just made that shit up. Uh, but let's say if uh, World of Warcraft Classic decides to like release another game, and then uh, or Blizzard decides to release another game, and then reuse that same uh you know number version number or license number on that game in order to allow them to publish it if they're caught doing that it says a penalty of three months for stopping the game publishing business will be imposed so they're they're basically raising their um they're, they're basically saying that they, they're raising the uh the penalty for violating these things because these things apparently happen all the time somewhere else in another article uh it said that you, that uh, a, a company that got a license for like 60 games had an additional 50 games or something like that that were running using the same duplicate you know uh, licenses so yeah it's um it's uh they're they're clamping down on a number of things and they also reiterate too uh, further down just basically saying that uh right here no recharge provided if you're under eight years old that means like you can't you can't pay for stuff cumulative monthly does not exceed 200 16 years old 18 years old no more than 400 this is exactly what i was saying they put limits on the number of um uh, on, on the amount of money people could spend and also the time that they could play and all that stuff like they're very very strict with their game here it is right at 10 to 8 uh in the morning no provide not provide service game services of any form yeah so they're very very strict and this this you know recently obviously clamped down even harder because of the uh well, because of animal crossing unbelievable man animal crossing is just just a gateway into descent um uh, let's keep moving <laughs> I don't want I don't want to harp on we've already done plenty of harping in the past on uh on on you know people in China anti-government stuff and all that. We have more stuff though. Speaking of China, but which I mean Tencent. Company I used to work for. Uh so some news apparently uh Tencent back I Dream Sky is in talks to buy rival gaming firm Li Yu. And you're probably wondering who is Li Yu? Li Yu is a company that back in December, very end of December 2015, they bought another company uh, called Digital Extremes. They they got the majority stake uh, for uh, well, I said the date closed in 16. So, uh, so they they bought a game. Uh, they bought Digital Extremes, obviously for Warframe. Warframe at the time was booming, booming like just just insane. This this must have been somewhere around second second uh, second dream or whatever. Uh, it's probably somewhere around that time when, when that was like peak, peak Warframe. And uh, so they, they went and put down $65 million. They got 58% stake. Then later on, there's an acquisition, acquisition. They gave them an additional stake. So they ended up having like 97% of, of uh, digital extremes for total consideration of $138.2 million. So, so they, got, they got digital extremes for, for, uh, for a good chunk of change. Seemed like it at the time, actually. Uh, so this was, you know, some years ago now, four years ago. And then recently, oh, sorry, then, and then uh, later, uh, October last year, there's an article here. This article also tran translated from China, uh, Chinese, sorry. Uh, and it says that Liu Technology seeks to sell Tencent NetEase. Goldman Sachs intends to inquire a controlling stake. Now, this is probably <laughs> loosely translated, but basically what they're saying is that uh, Tencent slash NetEase is uh, looking to uh, have an interest in, uh, in, in purchasing, basically, Digital extremes, uh, and we go a little bit later, and this is like I said, October of last year. <clears throat> now these talks sometimes take a very long time. It's not like they just walk in and just say, "Hey, man, you want to sell for a hundred mil?" <laughs> it takes months. It takes months. There's a lot. There's a lot of logistics that needs to go on when you like a lot of uh, uh, just just checking the books. Like once you get down to the point to where you actually want, you actually are going to. Uh, take over a company like you have to like check if one you have to like employ people to go and check their code right because the last thing you want to do is is absorb a company that has absolute shit code and then you end up spending more than you actually put into the company or whether you're even going to earn from the company into fixing the code so that's one thing right which yeah your due diligence exactly i'm not sure if people are familiar with terms but <clears throat> but that's something that we did very often at zam uh and you know the times that we didn't we paid for it <laughs> it happened um 
And then also like just the finance part of it. Like, what do you do with the people? What do you do with this? There's a lot of planning, everything. And then finally, when they settle, they say, okay, cool. This is what we're going to do. And then they, they go on, they actually complete the sale. Uh, and then later on, this is put up by Bloomberg where it says, I dream sky has taken interest. I dream sky is backed by 10 cents uh, to buy a rival gaming firm. This is also not quite up to date. What year, what is it? December 6, 2019. So we're still seeing, okay, there's still some interest there. Some talks, they won't give too many details, but some talks. And then it says right here, CBC back to this is the most recent article, March 19th, 2020. It says CBC backs $1.3 billion bid for Chinese games developer Li Yu. So now we're talking some serious money from a hundred and something million dollars, just hundred, hundred some piddly change uh, to $1.3 billion. Ugh. That's a lot of money. Um, so what does this mean for, for Warframe? Uh, I, I don't, I, I've heard recently, not even really necessarily related to this, that uh, Warframes would come under some scrutiny for content, uh, for, I guess, the pace of content, the type of content. Uh, I, I don't know. There's there's actually Sam, Sam, if you're here, Sam actually watched like a 90 minute video where they went through and they just basically did a, 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 a deep dive on the uh on warframe the current state of warframe and it was very much like a look at this is the past where we had all these creators because apparently my name was mentioned or not my name but my uh oh thank you babe oh boy oh, we'll see this right after the stream um we got some snacks we got some snacks thanks babe that's really good hold on a second delicious uh so yeah so it's, it's been going very down downhill heavily from what i've heard been pl friends playing warframe yeah, I, w I wish that Sam was here because he watched the entire thing. <laughs> and it was a news video for food. I don't go pause these real quick. Uh, and so now, well, so, so either way, now it, it feels like this, could, this is definitely a thing. Like, there's no longer like we're in talks, you know, the deal could fall through. Like, this feels like, all right, we're about where it is. We're about at the, the point time wise where this is where you shit or get off the pot, right? They've been looking for, I mean, what was it like probably a year? And like that's a long time. So I'm guessing that this is this is basically a done deal at this point. Uh, and it says uh, four people with knowledge of the matter say that uh, take over its rival the, that the uh, I Dream Sky Technology would take over its rival the Holdings Technology or Technology Holdings in a 1.3 billion dollar deal. And uh, they plan on uh, making binding for that uh, stock and all that good stuff. So, uh, so Warframe talking, you didn't call me. Oh man, I know. Warframe is reaching its limit and making new content that is fun and not grind fiesta. Very biggest issue stem from a glut of mechanics with little depth. That was the problem that I had when I tried to jump back into it. It was like every other thing I did when I felt like cool, man, I got, I got, I got this. I feel like I'm getting back in the groove of it. Um, and then it turns out it's like, oh no, there's another thing that I did that. I, don't understand. I have to go and learn this other thing. This whole new system. Uh, it did feel like it was getting pretty bloated in terms of uh, features and systems and all that good stuff. But I, 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 I could see how it could get to that point when you are constantly trying to keep people interested in a game where they're just completely devouring any kind of content you put out. So you have to create a new system. You have to do all this stuff. But what's the balance? I don't know. <laughs> uh, but all I know is that you know this is this is basically ten cent buys. Or Tencent at least owes owns a good healthy stake in digital extremes. Come before the end of the year, pretty much. Um, <clears throat> yeah, era. <laughs> Give us raids back. Oh, they took those out. Oh, that's right, they did. That's right. Yeah, counterpoint railjack. I don't know. Is that a counterpoint? Someone else could tell me. I don't play the game. Uh, railjack was implemented poorly. Oh, okay. Raids were a mess. Oh, it hurts. It hurts. It hurts. There's people who I've read a couple comments that say the only reason why they're playing is because Rebecca. <laughs> the devotion is real, man. It's hard for me to leave because of Rebecca. I was like, man, that's why I support whoever she works for. Um, so yeah, it, it is looking like you know we're gonna see an actual purchase here. It's gonna probably end up being Tencent, uh, Dream Sky, owning uh, Digital Extremes. And, you know, I, I think I think what we've seen is that Li Yu has been pretty hands off with uh, with Digital Extremes. It's kind of let them do their own thing. And <clears throat> I will tell you that, you know, I mean, I don't know for sure if Tencent's going to be hand, as hands off or what. I have absolutely no idea if they will. They will. But there's there's a there's a chance that they very, I mean, just let's not just assume that because Tencent's taking over that it's going to be a negative thing. I would love to think that because I'm not a fan of Tencent. But, uh, you know, try to try to be objective here. Path of Exile is also owned by <laughs> by uh, by Tencent. 
And for the most part, people seem pretty happy with the game. Uh, at least that's what it seems like from the people that are playing it in our Discord. Uh, and so I would say that, you know, there's, there's, there's a good chance that maybe they just buy it up because they want, you know, maybe more distribution rights or something, and then they could earn more, more of a cut from it, but not necessarily to go in and dictate what kind of services they should provide or whatever. Uh, or maybe they want the data that, uh, that, that Warframe collects from people, their, their habits, their play habits, their purchasing habits, stuff like that. I don't know. Uh, Rick Ford is a class act, but there's only so much she can keep community, uh, that she can keep a community playing the game. Yep. Uh, is that the video? You know, I'll take that video and I'll put it in the notes. Thank you for linking it. Let me go grab it real quick. Let me see. Mm. Oh yeah, yeah, there it is. Oh, it's not 90 minutes. Man, Sam! Sam, come on! I'll go put that down. There we go. So I don't know if this is a good thing or a bad thing. I don't. I mean, it might end up being a good thing. I mean, right now, it seems like to the veterans of Warframe that if for the most part, they're indifferent about the where, where the game is right now, you know, like maybe it's not its best it's ever been, but it's not also not the worst it could possibly be. And so I think maybe right now it's, it's kind of like they're at a teetering point where it could go either way. Um, but it's tough when there are so many, uh, so many videos. I mean, like I saw that video and it linked me to another video and another video. And there were so many videos of people just like, talking about how Warframe is bad now. And maybe this happens to every game that when they get to a certain age <clears throat> where they're trying to make everybody happy and they can't make anybody happy that you start getting articles like this. Uh, I don't know. It's tough because I don't play the game so I can't really say from my own experience. The best quote from that video, we are in quarantine and nobody wants to play Warframe. <sighs> Damn. That's a, that's, a, that's a fair and fucked up quote. That's right. He did, she did, I, I zoomed, I zipped through that numbers, uh, the, uh, that video a little bit. That's right. He did kind of scroll down and show the, uh, the numbers and everything. Uh, whew, this is why you don't make people happy. That's how Eve works. <laughs> Eve is what it is. And that's just, that's just, that's it. That's it. You just, that's it. It is what it is. You don't like it? Well, okay. <laughs> I, I I have not kept up on news on uh, Eve related news in so long. I have I have a I have a Eve um, stories from the Eve universe book on my on my wish list that like one day I'm gonna buy because it's like it's like why wouldn't I have a collection of some of the most insane stories that have ever been ever happened in gaming? Like of course it all happens in Eve. Uh, Eve is its own piece. That's right. Warframe is only seven years old. I want to say it's more isn't worth it. Are we are we talking about beta like or alpha like early early stuff or are we just talk about launch? Is it seven years total? I don't remember when it launched because you know I mean there's always a blurry line between early access and all that stuff. All of it. Wow, I'm surprised it's only seven years old then. Man, I thought for sure it'd be longer. Um, Eve is something you enjoy reading and hearing about. Bing. <laughs> uh, let me see. Sp speaking of. Nope, just kidding. <laughs> Don't know. Speaking of privacy concerns, maybe, kind of, ish, maybe. I mean, we did just say they collect your data and everything. Uh, Riot it has come under fire. And actually, this is a developing story uh, because shit is happening now. But Riot has a system in place, an anti-cheat system for its new game, Valorant, which is a shooter with some Overwatch. It's a CSGO-style shooter with some Overwatch influence uh right under fire again yeah yeah so we're used to anti-chi systems you launch a game battle eye something like that launches right eac whatever and it just makes sure that you're not running anything in the background while you're playing the game that's it that's what it does what we're not used to is anti-cheat running with a higher authority on your pc than even you, uh, and running at all times, period. Period. Not when you launch the game, right? At all times. And so people were really upset about that. <clears throat> they say ring zero. Now I'm not, I'm not a sysadmin. I don't know what that means, but I did read a pretty informative article on, on the matter. And I feel like, I feel like it makes sense. You know, not that they do this, but uh, uh, what Ring Zero means and kind of what kind of authority it gets and all that stuff. Uh, and Windows just lets it happen. Yeah, it basically it functions at the same level that an antivirus would. Now, an antivirus is 
something that is essential because an antivirus would watch everything at a level above everything. So if a, if something is introduced to the system that has admin privs, it wouldn't necessarily overthrow the entire thing because the antivirus which exists above admin privs would be able to suppress it. And that's <clears throat> that's the point of having an antivirus is that it's more powerful than any, everything on your PC, including you. But an antivirus is there to protect you from everything, to protect everything from everything kind of thing. <laughs> and Valorant's uh, anti-cheat is there to protect Valorant from everything. And that's it. But it has the same authority as an antivirus does. Uh, and so that's where, that's where things kind of get a little slippery. Because why would we give, for a single game, why would we give that kind of authority, that kind of, uh, those kind of privileges to this? And it's running all the time. Exactly. So there's this, uh, there's this write-up that a gentleman on, if I can find my notes here, that's, that's definitely worth a read if you want to go over the entire thing. But um, this guy on Reddit, love saying that because, of course, it does, this guy doesn't know what he's talking about. Uh, but this seems pretty legit. He basically goes through and he just writes up, you know, different, different points and different uh, 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 just examples of like how it would work, you know, the antivirus thing, all that stuff. Uh, and one note that I think and this one, this kind of resonated with me a little bit. It was like, this is what it could do. And that when you go to view your passwords in Chrome, not Valorant, uh, and you click on the little button that says show hidden password and it always pops up with a thing. It pops up and it says what it says, uh, um, enter in your, your, your windows password and you enter that in. You think that's secure, right? But if Valorant's running or Valorant's anti-cheats running, technically you could see that too. And so now that password's exposed. Uh, so this is as blue tongues, uh, pointed out it's, I smell an attack vector. Uh, it very, very well is an attack vector and it can be, but, but right is very, very, they, they are, uh, they're very certain that it's okay. And they ask that you trust them with this. And so it says, this actually was posted just a couple hours ago. And Riot says a message about Vanguard from our security from privacy team. So they basically go into detail saying it's a little background on our security team, uh, blah, blah, blah. And then Riot Vanguard philosophy, philo uh, sorry, philosophy. Uh, and they go through and they just kind of say, you know, say, hey, this is uh, the Vanguard consists of three components, the client driver and platform, the client user mode handles all the anti cheat detections while a game is running. The client needs to communicate with the platform to receive uh, detections and in order to in order for a player to be able to play, blah, 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 blah. But basically, what he's saying is, is that this is how the system works. Trust us. Why should you trust them? Because they have a bounty system. And so the bounty system the bounty system is basically if you find an exploit, let us know what it is and we will play, we'll pay you upwards of, I think, $100,000 here. Here we go. Right here. So let me blow that up for you guys, for you folks watching on mobile. Uh oh, we can't get big. There we go. There we go. <clears throat> so it says network attack with no user interaction, code execution on a kernel level, $100,000. And then it goes all the way down to $25,000. So they will, they will pay you uh, to let them know if you found some kind of. Uh, an attack vector, basically, if you find an exploit in order to get through it. Um, except stealing all that info can get you money. So, yes, so you can definitely uh, make money by getting information using this, but you'd have to execute it and then not be detected when you execute it. And then, of course, take that data and somehow sell it. There's a lot of legal problems with all of these things that it's mentioned. So it's a huge risk. If I feel like if you were to figure out something that's going to earn you $100,000 like that, you might just legally take the $100,000 and just fuck off. You might just do that because with everything else related to, to, uh, to what you can get in trouble for uh, trying to exploit this for personal gain, um, it may not be worth that money. Basically take the legal way to do the bug bounty or find the loophole and exploit it for infinitely more. Mm. Uh, this will stop someone in Russia. It, I mean, it may not. I mean, and that's the thing. And that's the thing. It's like they are they are hoping that one, you, the player, trust Riot. Uh, 
Uh, which, you know, I smile because I don't trust any gaming company with, <laughs> you know, in terms of like, sure, here's all my passwords and all my credit card information, literally everything I've ever typed with the computer. Here you go. I trust you with that information. No, I don't trust any game company like that. Uh, I realize that when we talk about like phones and privacy, all this stuff, I realize that on those levels that this happens, right? But this is again, like the antivirus level. We're talking a single game level. So how could I, how do I, how do I prevent myself from potentially being exposed to a, to a, to an, an attack that would farm my user data, passwords, credit card numbers, fucking everything else. How would I stop that from happening? I just don't install the game. Wow. Boy, that's easy. They already had cheaters of beta. Why do I trust them? Exactly. There's people already saying that there's cheaters already out there. So does that mean that their, uh, that their, their anti-cheat is already busted? I mean, I, I don't know. I have, I, I have no idea, but it's, it, but if people are reporting that there are already cheaters in the game and, and let's be, let's be fair. There are plenty of situations where someone just gets shot and they're like, bro, he's totally cheating. <laughs> Maybe it's not that, you know, um, cheaters out there means that they simply did not have an auto ban slash kick enabled. Uh, it helps when you don't, uh, when I don't like CSGO anyway, uh, you barely trust yourself with yeah, your own usernames, passwords. Uh, their amazing anti cheat that gives them such levels of access to your system already circumvented. Yeah, we don't have any proof. We have seen like there have been reports that there are cheaters in games, but we don't have any proof that there was a that there's been any kind of mass or any kind of uh, cheating or anything yet. Or maybe I don't know, but uh, it seems we can sue them if we get screwed. I'm fairly certain somewhere in some EULA that every of the hundred million people that have downloaded the launcher or whatever, or they'll probably play the game, uh, they, they'll just click away. I'm sure in there somewhere it says something along the lines of, you can't sue us. And that'll be that. And that'll be it. <sighs> so, yeah, I don't know if, um, I don't know if a hundred thousand dollars is, is, is enough. I don't like the fact that so many people's personal information like not just their gaming login and password but like all of the information is resting on a white hat being like yo hundred thousand dollars i'll take it ching <laughs> i just don't i just don't like that i don't like it they're leveraging it on this i mean if you if you read if you read this message about vanguard blah 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 it says what's next a part of our commitment for player security and privacy we've been running a bug bounty program on hacker one for the past six years We've rewarded security researchers with almost $2 million in bounties. $2 million for prices that range from $25,000 to $100,000. So that's, that's not a ton, but there's still quite a few there. Uh, if I recall properly, EULAs haven't been challenged in court. Oh, I don't have any data on that. Uh, if I really wanted to play a game, uh, you get off potato off Facebook and... This is marketplace and I only use it for Valorant. <laughs> there you go. Uh, $100,000 is nothing when some men just want to watch the world burn. Yeah, and that's and that's that's the thing I don't like about this is there is no reason for it to be running all the time. They are trying to avoid being labeled before they even ship as a game that's already just riddled with cheaters. And their solution to that is to put something in at the highest authority level on your PC and allow it to basically monitor everything. Uh, and I'm not a fan of that. Not, not me. Not me. Thankfully, Valorant wasn't a game I was necessarily interested in either, or anyway, so, uh, all this just another reason Valorant won't even get near my PC. Yep, yes, thank you so much, notifications off you, my dude. Uh, well, time to have two passwords, one with games, and the other with all of our security details, or just, like, have random numbers and letters and shit generated for literally everything. <laughs> Big Riot is watching you, that's right. Who owns a good chunk of Riot? Hmm. Hmm. Well, I'm sure that we'll be hearing more about that soon because, well, that article was just released or that update was just released like, what did I say, two hours ago or something. Uh, so I'm sure we'll hear more about that over the weekend. It is a Friday. Typically, if the news that gets launched on a Friday it doesn't really have a lot of traction come Monday, but you know, we'll see what happens. I'm sure that... The next step is somebody posting that they have successfully hacked, you know, this or, or, or actually, I don't know, um, found some way to circumvent their anti-cheat and that should hit top of Reddit and we'll talk about it on the news and yeah, it's probably gonna happen. Thank you, Natalie. <laughs> Big China's watching you. Yeah, boy. 
I don't have a transition for this one. I'm gonna close all these other windows out. Fallout 76 has recently released on Steam. I actually did not even know it was coming until Fallout 76, Fallout Tactics, I think, uh, and some other Fallout games just like magically appeared at the top of my recently played. And I was like, I don't remember playing these at all. And so I, I posted a picture in Discord and, and, and you guys sent me straight. I was like, oh, it's because they just, they just announced the launch or something like that. Uh, and it ended up launching, I think it was a Monday or something like that. Yeah, magic, magic, you guys, and, and the, the, the thing that made me think of was when U2, the band, <laughs> had a, uh, a song, a single, that was pushed to, like, every install of iTunes on every iPhone, and it caused such a ruckus, such a ruckus, that it was such a mess, but nobody really cared that it showed up on the Steam list, they were just kind of like, okay, whatever, plus, I already owned it, so it's like, if it's already on, if it's on Steam, I'm not gonna complain that all my games are in the same place, I haven't installed the Bethesda launcher in so long, so I was kind of like, whatever, oh, was it the whole album, that's right, it's right, it was the whole album, that's right, that's right, um, Bethesda only gave free game seats for people who connected their Steam account by April 12th, okay, so there was a limit on that, thank you so much, I didn't know that, um, it's already mostly negative with its first fallout, uh, it's first full, hold on, uh, so, so it was bombarded. I don't have any. I don't have any pictures or anything of when it was first bombarded. But there is a couple articles up. Here's Rock Paper Shotgun here. It says Steam users tried to review bomb Fallout 76, but its fans are having none of it. It was absolutely review bombed initially. When I first went and checked it out, it was mostly negative, and it was uh, uh, and it was just getting just 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 yeah just nailed. Um, let me actually go and pop open the page now because I'm sure it's probably changing by the day, <laughs> by the by the minutes. Uh, and yeah, now it's now it's resting at at mostly positive. So, uh, yeah, when the game, it, when you technically own the game, you can leave an update, right? Like you could leave, so you could leave a review and there's a lot of us, myself included, who played the game when it launched and then we didn't really play it that long after. And so our feelings on the game were pretty much negative, right? It was like, mm. so the game launches on steam. I would say probably the, uh, lesser intelligent folks or more malicious folks would probably say, you know what? Fuck this game. I'm gonna go and write a negative review. This game sucks, 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 sucks. Negative. Down. Thumbs down. Right? And so you get a lot of those that are popping up all over the place. But from what I've heard and what I've read is that, um, the game has, with Wastelanders, the latest update, has done pretty well. Now, I don't know, uh, if that's... The truth, but I don't know if that's if Wastelanders is fantastic, but I've heard that it's it's a much much needed improvement over the base game. And so, if the game is just launching on Steam now, and you have all these negative reviews from when the game released years ago, is that unfair? I think so. Why would I rate? I wouldn't go and fire up No Man's Sky and be like, this game sucks. Doesn't have any of the content that was prom promised. All that. I wouldn't. Why would I do that? I wouldn't do that. It doesn't make any sense. And so, I would. I mean. <laughs> They've gone through such a huge change. Would you, would, for those of you guys who play Final Fantasy fourteen, would you go, would you go and leave a comment saying this game sucks? They should relaunch everything, start from scratch. That's fucking stupid, isn't it? <laughs> now I'm not saying that that Fallout seventy six Wastelanders is like is the new. Yes, I fucking quit. <laughs> I'm not saying that Wastelanders would be the uh, uh, the the uh, Realm Reborn equivalents or anything like that, or is it the next No Man's Sky? But I've read. That that's the case. Copy pasta. <laughs> people want to hate Bethesda. I've read. Yeah, I've read that that's the case. <clears throat> is that uh, people think that oh, this is almost like No Man's Sky. It's got all the stuff that they promised at the beginning. Now, I, again, I haven't played the game recently, but apparently, people in our Discord have. There's some sixty something hours. Thank you so much. Who posted that? Um, what is it? The thank you, Jaeger X Fallout Three. Who Jaeger X actually wrote the damn tool that tracks all this stuff. We we're watching you guys. Uh, <laughs> Fallout 76, 62 point or sixty two hours eight minutes. Uh, it's not great. It's it's not a great game still, but it's more fun. Just don't get Fallout first. It still seems unnecessary. Again, I've been enjoying it. There you go. Big phony's watching us. Right. It's somewhat. Uh, I'm actually Kimo. I'd like to know what you what you have to say about this because I didn't I didn't. Uh, we had a little discussion before the stream about uh, about this too. Uh, I just checked Steam. Forget Fallout. CS Sam Four is announced. What? Overall, it's okay game. It's somewhat justified enough. Fallout seventy six was a mess, and developers did some shady, bad, bad shit. That's true. They did. Yeah, it was uh, not well received by a lot of folks. I enjoyed it for like a minute, but then after that, I was kind of like, well, I'm kind of done with it. Uh, is it good now or was it just so bad that this mediocrity they have released seemed good? Some people would say that about No Man's Sky, actually. Even now in its current state. 
They'll say, well, the game was such trash when it first came out that even, let's say, like, this is, like, the best. This is, like, a number one game, 10 out of 10. And then this is, like, No Man's Sky at launch. And they're, like, right here. And you think, whoa, it's crazy. The goalposts are so far away here. <laughs> it's like, oh, my God, it's crazy. Um, let's see. Do not support developers, publishers that do shady shit. I mean, I guess <laughs> it's all of them. <laughs> like, I watch, uh, rates it as, oh, here we go. You know, I mean, you said exactly what I feel should be said. That review bombing is based on their opinions over a year ago. Is entirely wrong. I'm glad we could agree on something. Uh, <laughs> just kidding, Kimo. See, see, I told you. Trust me, man. I try. I try to be fair. Uh, it was a very botched launch, but it's equivalent to Fallout 4. It's New Vegas, but it's better than launch. Hey, and everybody liked New Vegas, right? Um, hmm. But it does have some great reviews, man. Like people are loving it. Mostly, mostly positive for the most part. I would say you know, maybe, maybe it is worth another look, especially if you only played it at the beginning. I hated the whole idea of Fallout 76. Thumbs up. Obviously, he goes into detail about why he hated it before, and then he likes it now. Um, here's the stash limits. Horrible. I don't know. How, and here's the thing. With the negative reviews, I can't even say for sure if this is... If this review is to the current state of the game. You know, because I haven't played it. Uh, you playing some of it lately? I'm liking it so far. Oh, good. I won't review bomb without playing the game first. I guess I'm the minority on that. I no, it's true because I mean, think about it. like this thing. This game was basically just inserted into everybody's lists, right? I, I mean, probably, basically anybody that registered their Steam account before April 12th, I think, is what it was. Um, so that's a lot of folks that just all of a sudden see this game that they they quit because they hated. And then they're like, now is my chance to fuck this game up. And they're malicious like that. Like, people will be like, you know what? This game sucks. Or maybe, they're, and at the same time, there's also people who don't know that there were changes that, that were made. And so they assume, they, they think that they're doing everybody a solid by hopping in and saying, hey, whoa, be careful. This game is garbage. I played it before, a year plus ago. <laughs> uh, the first two days, I saw a lot of negative views. I had zero playtime. Yes, they can be playing it not through Steam, but it just looks like... They simply took the free copy to shit on it. Exactly. And we know this is true. We apps, man, we talked about review bombing on this show so many times. You guys know we're like 61 episodes into this bitch. Doesn't feel like it. Uh, but yeah, we've definitely talked about review bombing on several different occasions. Uh, and this was another example of that. And, you know, like I said, it seems like it was simply because so many people had access to do so that they took it upon themselves to to go and shit on a game um we had episode 69 you know i don't remember the episode numbers until i go to render the video and then i'm like i'm like oh oh that was episode blank oh shit look at that and then it's like okay I'll, next next week is going to be a, a, a landmark time 50 episode 50 i think we passed like a while ago and i was like oh yeah we're gonna have a celebration i just totally forgot about it <laughs> we don't number these things uh there are a lot of things that are so questionable they nerfed the perks and have unnerfed them They've nerfed a lot of the legendary items and have unnerfed them. Yeah, and your food and water still drain even quicker than it used to. Uh, all that aside, I still like it. New quests are fun. A lot of dialogue now has options instead of just here's a quest, do it, bitch. <laughs> this has episode numbers when it's rendered. <laughs> the file does. <laughs> That's it, though. Um, well, good to know. Good to know. So it, so it sounds like it sounds like this. If you already had the game in your inventory because you you uh, you got it from Bethesda or got it you know linked a long time ago. Um, before you leave a review, play the game. But if you don't, if you don't play the game, don't leave a review. That's it. That's not. I mean, that's not completely unfair, right? Play the game. This should be in all cases. Just play the fucking game first. Uh, it's like the opposite with Warframe being the darling free to play. But right now in the community, there's there uh, there's a fire being a, uh, being a fire lit under them for the past couple of years of updates. So you guys got your business practice of Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 campaign remaster is coming April 30th, 2020. What? Why? Wait, when did that first release? God damn, what was that? Uh, how long ago was that? I don't even know. Um, but what if you can't get past the tutorial? Can you still review it? The tutorial was so short too, wasn't it? Well, I don't know if they, they made it more robust, but I remember, I recall like getting through the tutorial in like 20 minutes. It was actually kind of nice. Uh, I think, uh, yeah, when you come out the bunker and then, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think Fallout 76 needed more development time and it was rushed and released. With a mic, this is a joke. Ah, oh, fuck, I did. Uh, this makes a quick money without caring about the state. Uh, oh, Cuphead. Oh, man. Man, I don't fucking know. I'm a platformer. I can't. I don't know, man. I forgot. I forgot. Damn. Anyways. <laughs> uh, speaking of ratings. Hey, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Uh oh. Hold on. Uh oh. 
I lost a link. Hold on. I lost a link. Where's it at? I got it. 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 Bam. Bam. All right. Speaking of ratings. ESRB will now tell you if a game has loot boxes. Woo! No problem, Chemo. Now you understand why I was upset, but we're good. We're totally good, dude. Don't worry about it. Water under the bridge. Oh, hey, get your hands off your junk. And oh. Gigamobs. One second. You, go ahead, buddy. And Gigamobs behavior pack. Gigamobs. And Gigamobs behavior pack and Kaiju Craft resource pack. Uh huh. It equals one giant Godzilla. One giant Godzilla. 1990. Awesome, dude. He's been mixing and matching, mixing and matching uh, resource packs, behavior packs to create his own mod combinations. He also likes to walk around and grab his junk all the time. But you know, who, who doesn't? <laughs> what what uh, what dude doesn't do that all the time? Shit. All right. Anyways, <laughs> who doesn't do that? Yeah. You got a penis. You walk around. You hold it. That's what you do. <laughs> so. I gotta like stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it. Get your hand off your junk, get your hand junk. <laughs> uh, where was your hands? We used to do that waiting for the bus. Actually, we used to like, stand out there by the bus with our hands in our junk, just like trying to keep them warm because freezing outside. The Vegas mornings are like thirty degrees and windy. It was like a 10, 10 degree wind, wind chill factor. I know some of you guys live in the Antarctic and everything. You're just scoffing at me right now, but I'm telling you, it was chilly, man. Bye, buddy. I love you. All right. He's a funny guy. Uh, all right. Whatever portion of the show that will be cut out. Not at all. Really mess shit in. Are you kidding me? This is what quarantine does to somebody. Got a surprise guest appearances. So the ESRB is putting in a... Um, <laughs> they are putting in a rating system. Initially, now now you might think, wait, didn't they already have something like this? They did have... They were talking about putting in something about loot boxes initially. It's like, oh, it contains loot boxes. But what ended up happening was they surveyed a bunch of parents and parents was like, yeah, I know what a loot box is. And what they described was incorrect. They did not know what a loot box was. And so the ESRB determined that, okay, well, parents are idiots. They don't know what loot boxes are. So we have to be a little bit more specific. Uh, surprise mechanics comes to mind. Exactly. They're not loot boxes. They're surprise mechanics. Uh, thanks, Akagni. Uh, <laughs> uh, and so what they what they've decided to put in was that it includes in-game purchases, or includes random items. So they're trying their best to be as descriptive as possible and as few words as possible so that even somebody who is not familiar with what a loot box is can read this and they would say okay so you could buy stuff in the game after you've already bought the game and the items that you get are going to be random i think that's pretty well descriptive but it's still it still feels like not enough simply because it could be rated T for teen. It could probably rate. Does it actually say that it has to be a T for teen? Uh, I just slap on slot machines. I know. Um, it's virtual gambling mechanics. That they would like to do that, but I think that because there's there's still for whatever reason uh, there's still a little bit of disagreement on whether or not it is technically gambling. They can't put gambling mechanics. Now I know it's gambling. You guys know it's gambling, but is it gambling? That's the problem, right? Is that we can't agree on that for some reason. Uh, so does a, does having microtransactions affect the rating or do they say just say it exists? So what I could see is that, and uh, I, didn't, I don't think I read that it does, in, does impact the actual rating itself, but I do feel that if it includes some kind of microtransaction system, it should maintain a higher rating, like force parents to take a look at this game, right? Um, it's gambling mechanics. <laughs> uh, let's see, uh, what about when Activision or EA put loot boxes in one month after release? They'd have to. They would have to revise their their sticker. But but here's the thing, man. I mean, like, does anybody read those stickers? Like, do parents actually read those stickers? Like, if it pops up, even when the game loads, if it pops up, are they gonna like gonna read it, or are they just click right through it? Like, thank you for for making this, you know, easy to read, but. Uh, are you going to read it? Do you? Do I as a parent? I I can't say that I do, but simply because I don't know where to look for this stuff. 
like Declan wants to play a game, I either already know the game, so I know if it's, I think, I think I'm kind of in a unique situation where it's like 99.9% .9 of the games that Declan plays, which is, you know, seriously all of them, uh, I'm already familiar with. So I already know what he's getting into. But, and then when I think about where are these stickers at? Oh, it's on the physical media. You know, it's like, well, yeah, who, yeah, who, who, when's the last time you went and bought a physical game? Uh, I know I, I have physical games quite a bit, but, uh, but. I'm sure none of you guys do. <laughs> uh, this is not, nothing measured. It's just a small print and nobody reads those things. Exactly. So where, I don't know where they're going to put them, which is why I, why I feel like it should probably have like a mature rating. If there's like in-game purchases, if it has a mature rating, then you're basically forced, forced uh, to have an adult basically buy the game. An adult has to buy the game. They're going to wonder why does it have a mature rating? And they read it and they say, oh, because it has a uh, surprise mechanics <laughs> in it. Oh, okay. Now I see. That's, that's why. That's why. And so they would go and, uh, and they read that. Yeah. What's up, dude? Real quick, real quick, I gotta do my show. What's up? What's up? Go! Giga Cow, Creepy Spider, Zilla, Kong, Masura, and Gojira. Oh boy. You got them all? Yeah. Oh, good. Gojira, Gojira. <laughs> Without any parents were shocked that out to find out that GTA, Call of Duty, and other M rated games had M ratings on them? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. You know, Declan is very, he's very particular about, he knows the, the, for uh, Shin Godzilla, like all the different phases. I think he knows all of the Japanese names for each phase. Like there's a different name for each one. So he's, 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 yeah, he's loving, he's loving some Godzilla stuff, man. We actually, we ordered him a couple of, uh, uh, Shin Godzilla, um, action figures, right? So, cause we, we never buy those kid toys and he came to us and he says, and he said, you know, you guys never got me Godzilla toy. Cause we have like you know, we've bought him like Minecraft shit in the past, but we haven't bought him toys in forever. And so he's so, so he asked. I was like, you know what? Let's do it. Cause fucking everybody's kid toys. Let's fucking do it. He's, he, he's asking. He's telling it. You know. <laughs> and we're like, oh, okay. Well, we'll look into that. So yeah, I got him. I got him a uh, Shin Godzilla, but it's all three phases, which is kind of cool. So it shows like all the all the different you know metamorphoses or whatever. So. Never bought him toys. I know, man. Killing me. I thought he was fine with just having just having his uh just just having his phone, but I guess not. Uh so anyway, yeah, the ESRB rating on Steam is down the page in the game detail if, if it's there at all. Awesome. Let's pray just buy one game and not know anything about it. Which is why we have some news about parents that are offended because there's a nude scene in Mass Effect. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, this 18 game. All right, I'll buy it. I'll buy it for you for Christmas. Yep. So yeah, it's 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 one of those things that's like, well, it's something. <laughs> and, and, you know, I actually appreciate the way it's worded because I understand that they're never going to agree on whether or not it's gambling or not. And if we leave it up to them to figure out whether or not it's gambling or not, they'll never put a sticker on it that says anything. And they'll just not agree with it and they'll just, they'll just be in limbo forever. And so this is, this is a solution for now on a piece of, you know, sticker that no one's ever going to see. So. So, yep. Ah. Should be worded includes gambling like elements using real currency. Yeah, I don't know. I don't, I don't, I'm not, I'm not, a, a, I don't do illegal stuff, but, uh, oh, here we go. So you got, oh, yeah, it's right here. So it shows uh, Peggy, rated for Peggy, violence. So yeah, it is on every Steam page. Oh, yeah, I have seen that. Duh. It's like every game has that. Fallout 76 Steam. Let's see what that has it. Uh, da, 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 right there. Look, and blood and gore, drug reference, intense violence, strong language, suggested themes, use of alcohol, interactive elements, user in, users interact, in-game purchases. So yeah, that's what I'm talking about. In-game purchases. It, all it says. It doesn't say in-game purchases and then random items. So that's what they're looking for. It's kind of flesh that out a little bit more. So it's a step in the right direction. It's a very, very, very small step, but it's a step in the right direction. I've been the bad guy to many kids because I explained to their parents why a game is age restricted. What's disheartening to see is the parents who hear what I say and still buy like GTA for their six year old. Oh, repeatable, right? Yeah, repeatable. Would be, that'd be another good word to squeeze in there. But like I said, they're trying to squeeze as many words. And it doesn't matter. No one's gonna read this shit anyways. No one cares. Warning, explicit lyrics. <laughs> shit was a joke from the beginning. Um, psychological manipulation to squeeze more money out of you. Thank you. That's what they need to put in all of them. Damn. Keep your kid away from your credit card. PayPal information. Uh, let's see. What's next? Da, 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 da. Oh, I lost my page. Ba, 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 boo. There we go. Ah, uh, yes. So. NASCAR. 
NASCAR had a moment, a heated gamer moment recently. Kyle Larson, who is a the driver in NASCAR, uh, they were participating in an iRacing. They've been doing a lot of iRacing lately just to kind of keep the drivers busy and also uh, keep the do their best to keep uh, the sponsors happy and everything. And uh, Kyle Larson, who is a young racer, he said something silly in voice chat. I'll go ahead and play a clip for you guys. Please note that it is censored. Okay. Here we go. And I'm I can see it. You can't, can't hear me? Hey. What are you saying? The sheriff is near! Kyle, you're talking to everyone, bud. Yep, yeah, we heard that. Oh, damn. Uh, yikes. Don't say anything. Yikes. Yikes. Yeah. So he did. He popped into voice chat. He wasn't aware that he was, uh, <laughs> that he, <laughs> the pit crew is near. <laughs> he was not aware that he was speaking on a, on a, on a public channel where everybody could hear. Uh, and you could tell about everybody, the responses, everyone was like, yikes. And even, even the person who was streaming at the end, he even said, Don't say anything. Just don't say anything else is what he said. Just, just please don't say anything else. So this obviously caused a bit of a shitstorm because as we know in gaming that you just don't say shit like this uh, and expect to just walk away from it completely unscathed. You should probably not do that. Especially uh, if you are uh, working in an industry that is, uh, I would say, it's kind of assumed that these type of, this type of racism kind of just exists, right? NASCAR. Who's surprised that somebody in NASCAR used the N-word? Hmm, right, you see? And this is something they're trying so desperately to kind of steer away from in order to open themselves up to more fans and everything. Uh, and then this happens. Uh, no guy was saying something that's going to shot for him here. Uh, each week, a new NASCAR driver loses sponsorship due to iRacing. <laughs> yeah, another another uh, uh, racer or another uh, driver uh, ended up, uh, I think because he quit a race or something, he rage quit a game. Uh, he ended up losing his sponsor. Like, shit's weird, man. <laughs> it's just really weird. Um, did Twitch ban it for a week? Well, it wasn't his channel that we were watching that one on. And I don't actually think that he, Kyle Larson was actually streaming. Uh, so obviously this is something that blew up. It was all over the place. Um, uh, we saw that uh, over here we have, you know, Fox. Uh, Fox, or sorry, Fox. Uh, NASCAR driver Kyle Larson is suspended indefinitely without pay after using the N-word during a virtual race yesterday. So they, uh, so I don't know, I don't know if he has sponsors that dropped him, but I mean, just looking at his, at, at his, uh, you know, at his alpha here, I mean, he has you know, Monster, Coke, McDonald's, um, you know, Chip Ganassi, I know Chip Ganassi dropped him, so he's basically done. It doesn't matter about the sponsors actually, but um, uh, Credit One, I mean, this is a lot, I mean, he represents these people, you know? And so, uh, so video games confessions in real life. Oh yeah, that's a lot of money right there on that suit. Uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. It's a lot of money on that suit. So I mean, he's fired. He's done. Uh, he did. Uh, he did. He did come out with an apology. He did come out with an apology where he basically just said, you know. Yeah, I just want to say I'm sorry. And that's about it. Uh, yeah, I. I <laughs> I reach out to my friend Joe to see what he thought about this. What you got to say, Joe? I can't say the N word, but you can get on YouTube and watch any black man's rap video and they're calling each other the N word. What the hell is this discrimination? I'm white. I can't say the N word and they can't. And then we got the United States Department of Agriculture refusing to issue people's licenses because they live in a city that the city's called Gay Georgia. Oh, okay, Joe. The hell is this? Okay, thank you, Joe. Thank you, thank you. So, <laughs> I'm sorry for revealing that I'm a racist. That yeah, that you could just let shit like that just fly. Oh man. Uh, so uh, it's <laughs> yeah. There are just there are just things that you don't say or do when you're in a public forum like that. And uh, this is this is the harsh reality that I think a lot of uh, a lot of people who are now now subjecting themselves to. To being online because they have to for a living for example now that everybody's eye racing and <laughs> talk to us joe um and they're finding out that they just can't say shit and get away with it 
We've known about this. PewDiePie pioneered the heated gamer moments. <laughs> and now and now we're just seeing it happen over and over again. Um, <laughs> Joe Exotic take Uncle Chad's job. Why, why the fuck is it called a gamer word? Don't say that word gamers. Uh, well, I mean, we we talk about it. Heated gamer moment and all that stuff. But yeah, it's not gamer word or anything. It's because NASCAR didn't explain to the racers about Twitch guidelines. I just think that I mean I don't know what that what they communi- what the communication was behind the scenes uh, in terms of like their i racing sessions and all that, but I just can't yeah I, I don't know I don't know I don't know what it is man <laughs> yeah, PewDiePie is a true trailblazer imagine uh, what in the poop and if you're saying uh, that in a private I gotta wonder what's going on with you yeah I want to talk with Guns and Joe Exotic as hosts <laughs> uh, I like to apologize if it is because people aren't actually sorry about what they did they're sorry the wrong people witnessed what they did. Uh, I racing is actually aired on Fox e- Fox Sports. Wait, no, this but this was a streamed thing. This was was this actually on TV? That part I didn't I didn't get. Was that actually on TV? TV? I don't think so. Was it like that recording? I thought that was that was a stream only. Okay, okay, that's what I thought. That's what I thought. Um, I know that the races. I know that they're doing a lot of esports related stuff. Uh, oh, the Rage Quit one was. Oh my god, that's hilarious. Uh, I, I racing is streamed on Facebook and Twitch as far as I know. Yeah, at least uh, he didn't race in non Regalia. That would have been a PvP move. Oh my god. Uh, Shiki Yoki, yes, we're still doing the news, but thank you. Uh, this was something fun that uh, driver the driver put together. Oh, there you go. Exactly what Mike said in his controversial video regarding Fuck That Loser. Diablo 3 comment, why would they apologize otherwise? That's right. Why would they apologize otherwise? Um, yeah, he said something, and he probably thought he was being edgy or funny or whatever. Like, I'm not going to say that Kyle Larson is a racist in the traditional terms, historical terms, uh, but I will say that he's obviously thinks he's free to use racial terminology uh, in a way that, I mean, he was fucking hard R for fuck's sake. It wasn't like he was trying to be cool, you know? Or he was thinking, he probably thought he was being cool saying it. Uh, but, man just dumb just dumb lost all sponsors i'm sorry video yeah exactly so uh, stupid yeah he is yeah he's part japanese yeah, yeah. um <clears throat> so so moving on that was that was actually that was that was i gotta say man like when it happened i was i could not believe it because if it it, it, it was one of those things where it was like oh man these guys don't know, do they? Because I, I was, I was, I think I was awake when it first like started making the rounds, and I was like, "Oh God, they don't know, they don't know, like they don't know that this is a this is something that's gonna blow up." Um, because if it happens to a gamer, right? It's kind of like you idiot, like you fucking knew better, you know? You fucking knew better. <laughs> we we have been told time and time again. <laughs> if you use that terminology with your buddies, do you think you just say that shit online? Like, no, you can't do that. Um. And then here it's just kind of like, oh my God, they have no idea. They don't know that they can't do that. Oh man, so stupid. Not all of them, of course, but obviously Kyle Larson, you know. I'm sorry I got Kai as all the video in his van. That's why I stopped it right there. Um, moving on. We've got some good news. Yeah, we got some good news. We have some game announcements. Some of you guys saw a couple days ago, the Crisis Twitter popped open, said receiving data. Everyone was like, Hold up. Everyone got super excited. Oh my god. We're getting Crisis 4! Holy shit, we're getting Crisis 4! Woo! I did the same. I did the... <laughs> I, did the <laughs> I had the same reaction. I was, just, I was like, whoa, we're getting, we're getting Crisis! This is gonna be great! And then it comes out and it says, Cloak disengage! You've been asking, you've been waiting today. The wait is over. It's coming. Crisis remastered. Or optimized. On PC, PlayStation, Xbox One, and for the first time on Nintendo Switch platform. The Switch can officially run Crisis. That's right. Which means that the game has probably been heavily optimized. Also, the game is pretty old, despite the fact that it has artificial intelligence on every single blade of grass, which is the reason why the shit ran like shit and also single process and all that. You know, I mean, there's a number of things working against it, but maybe it's optimized now you can play it again now I, I i play the original crisis i played crisis 3 as well i think i played 2 in there somewhere uh forgettable i guess but <laughs> crisis 3 had a sick bow it was one of the best bow games that you played uh and i'm hoping that uh that we see i mean in my head i imagine crisis 3 still looks beautiful honestly i mean crisis 1 scaled so well uh, ultimately, it was just such a, a power hungry beast for so long. Uh, Crisis 3 was way better optimized and beautiful. 
And so, yeah, I wonder, I wonder what, what a remaster of Crisis One will look like. Because again, to me, I still feel like Crisis in my head. You know, the rose, rose tinted goggles. I feel like Crisis One looks fine. What are they going to remaster it for? Uh, yeah, yeah, didn't people just buy Crisis to brag that the computer could run it? That's always the first game you try it. Yeah, exactly. The first game you run on a new system. Uh, can Crisis run on a Switch? Somebody actually already posted us. Uh, scroll down here. Um, there you go. Switch after running Crisis for 10 minutes. I actually want to know what the origin of this picture is because it's like a phone or something. It's got a USB plug and I don't know. It's like it's got some heavily heavy Photoshop JPEGery going down here. I don't know, man. It's almost like somebody took a phone and just slapped a bunch of graphics on top of it. <laughs> uh, yeah, I do the Crisis series, so we'll probably buy this admittedly. Oh yeah, I would too. I will definitely pick this up. Uh, and, uh, oh, look at that. Optimize. That, there you go. Still my jokes. It's a meme pick. What was that? Oh. Ah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it has a plug that doesn't connect, that can't connect. I know. There's something, something shady going on here. Also, it's like a... Never mind. <laughs> uh, not PS5. Yeah, not PS5. It is just coming out on uh, PC, PS4 right there, Xbox One, and the Nintendo Switch. So, I mean, great news for everybody, especially if you've never played the Crisis, Crisis game. I thought it was kind of a cool series. I mean, come on, the dude in a nano suit just like throwing dudes all over the place. It was fucking excellent. Uh, old Crisis is pretty damn scalable too, though. It was. It was. That's what I'm saying. In my head, it still sounds like it's just, I still visually feel like it's uh, you know still a stellar game. Uh, PS5 and Series X can't run it. They aren't powerful enough. That's right. <laughs> uh, the first picture is probably the old Galaxy phones that caught fire. Oh, yeah. That's what it probably came from. I was wondering where, where they got the... Yeah, that's probably what it was. Uh, my theory is we'll get Crisis 2 treatment and graphics were optimized for consoles. Yeah, so maybe like the, Twitch, the Switch will probably be slightly... I haven't played... Has anybody played Witcher on Switch? Witcher 3? Hmm. I wonder what their... Um, like what that game looks like compared to other platforms. I haven't looked into that myself personally i used to have quite a bit of fun with crisis 2 multiplayer when it was popular it was like call of duty but cooler features i know runs like ass oh that sucks <laughs> <sighs> they look severely low res whoa man Oof. okay well we'll see what happens i mean we might get a new switch in the future that can run games at 60 frames per second on uh, when plugged in Hard to complain when you're playing Animal Crossing, though. I'm not going to lie. Which I think Animal Crossing actually does support 60 frames per second when plugged in, if I recall. Unless it's 720p. Can you tell the difference on Animal Crossing? I don't know. Crisis 3 had some of the best web customization I've ever experienced! With all the on-the-fly adjustments you could do. That's right! Man, I fucking love Crisis 3. Uh, Switcher 3. <laughs> God, they missed opportunity. Uh, Crisis multiplayer was good design with absolutely no support or anti-cheat. You mean they didn't have a... Above admin level <laughs> anti cheat that was running at all times, huh? Huh? Hey, we got some more, some more good, good gaming news. We have another game that's coming next week. A new XCOM, XCOM, Shimura Squad, <laughs> Chimera Squad. Uh, it's coming out next week. Right now, if you pre-order it, it's nine dollars and ninety-nine cents. I, I, I'm. That's half half the normal price. Price. I mean, nineteen ninety-nine. I don't know how long this game is gonna end up being, but nineteen ninety-nine seems like a pretty good price for a full, you know, fully fleshed out turn-based, you know, game. Uh, but yes, right now it is nine dollars and ninety-nine cents. It's fucking cheap. So if you are already, if you're already a fan, you might as well just go pick this shit up right now. Bam, nine ninety-nine. Do it. Like, if you know you're probably gonna like this game. <laughs> and there you go uh, and that is that that is the other thing to note that's the next thing on my list here is that coming up the next week is Gears Tactics oh hey look it's our buddy <laughs> Kyle Larson there he is uh, he's got the black and white should say wasted across the front uh, Gears Tactics sets itself apart from XCOM with smart reinventions of Overwatch action points skill trees and more what I have heard is that uh, Gears Tactics is a solid turn-based uh, strategy game. Um, I, and as somebody who, like I said, recently realized that was something, you know, you realize you're into a kink, you're like, damn, this whole time, it's just something I'm really into. Uh, yeah, apparently that's the thing for me. So I'll, I'll be checking out both this and uh, Chimera Squad. 
uh, over the next couple weeks for sure. 95.5 chance to hit, misses by shooting the opposite direction. Keyboard somehow broke backwards. XCOM magic! You know, it's funny. That's that's the joke. It's like anybody that's ever played XCOM or any turn-based game uh, is, uh, <clears throat> well, you're looking at... You're looking at like uh, your survivability rate from coronavirus, and you're kind of like, wow, so you have a 98, 97% chance to uh, to survive, huh? <laughs> That's just some scary numbers. Uh, turn base is your kink. It is now, I guess. Uh, I do, I do have, you know, I, I go back and forth, you know, I'll pick one up and I'll play for a little bit. I have a couple in my queue that I've been looking at wanting to start, but then I fall into Wreckfest or, or Oxygen Occluded. So, yep. Yep. That's XCOM, baby. That's right. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, so we have two great, uh, two potentially great uh, turn-based games coming out over the next couple weeks. Uh, you know, uh, Gears Tactics. I just, did I actually get the date on this one? I uh, usually I write them down. I didn't write them down. Some nerd. Sorry guys. Uh, but this one comes out. I think uh, the uh, Tuesday is it Tuesday? Not this coming Tuesday. The following Tuesday or Monday or something? I'm not quite sure. Um, but yeah, so you can pick this up. And 28th. Thank you. So five days. So that would be like a Tuesday or something. I think. Uh, and then, or you can pick up, or both, you can pick up Chimera. I mean, Chimera Squad being nine ninety nine, I feel like you could just get this, and even if you end up not playing it until you're old and retired, it's fine. I don't know what the price point is going to be of uh, of Gears Tactics, but I'm guessing it'll probably be around thirty bucks or something like that. <clears throat> if it's not hundred percent, it may as well be fifty. <laughs> that's right. Yes. Uh, oh, Game Pass. That's right, Game Pass. Yeah. Retired. Pfft. It's ninety nine. Yes, and I should. Yeah, I should also go ahead and say it's ninety nine till May first. Stop pre order. Yes, yeah, stop pre ordering on games that are, uh, you know, that where you feel like you could potentially get shafted for sure. Like, don't pre order. Don't pre order. Don't pre order. I uh, I don't know. It's. It, I feel like there are some games, some games you can make an exception on. This one might be one. I feel like it's kind of like how can they fuck this one up kind of thing. You know, uh, there's no online components. You know, and it's yeah, and it's super cheap, so it's tough. It's like sick, yeah, sixty dollars versus ten dollars. You know, <clears throat> XCOM, yeah, XCOM has a, a pedigree. Yep, they do indeed. So, yep, both of those are available for pre-order if you like. I don't know what Gears Tactics is going to be, but like I said, according to this article, it says Gear Tactics is shockingly good strategy game. Uh, I'll be playing it for sure. I haven't played hardly any of the Gears games, but I'll play this one. <laughs> with so many games with loot boxes, uh, is there a surprise? It's hard to pre-order without worrying you're going to get shafted. Yep, 100% that Switch Crisis photo came from a failed Sansa Galley note set found another angle of the same photo. Lord Pansy 10. Doing the work. Thank you so much. Uh, XCOM has a history of making me scared to continue my Iron Man playthrough when I suddenly am doing good and I'm further than ever before. Oh boy. Just stop now. Yeah, I got through half the game on uh, Iron Man. <laughs> Uh, it sounds a lot better than uh, I failed halfway through the game. <laughs> Permadeath. I hope it's like Game Pass. I would like to try out Gears Tactics. There you go. Uh, didn't they add an ESRB tag that mentions loot boxes? Oh, is it on there? Hold on. Let's go see what it says. Da -na 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 -da. Blood and violence. Oh, blood and violence. Oh, man. I don't know if my wallet could support blood and violence. Um,. Oh, your characters can't die in XCOM. Oh, that's right. These are this is like a fixed squad or something, is what I what I've read. Bloody violence. It doesn't say bloody violence. That's right, just blood and violence. But not both. Hmm. Uh I do have a kind of a funny clip I wanted to play for you guys. I just came across right before the uh, uh right before the stream. It is Joey Gallo is a baseball player, as you'll you'll surmise from the video. Uh, he's playing MLB The Show, and he's got some issues with the photo they used of him. Yeah. They did me dirty with the picture here. Let's look at it again. See, now, here's an example. Mike Miner. This is a great picture. It's a nice picture of him pitching. You know, it makes sense. Here's a picture of him staring at the camera. It looks good. I just don't understand how my pictures got picked, and the guy said that's the picture we're putting on there that's the one you know look and elvis all right right good picture nice smile he's about to hit a ball right here probably a line drive to right field just a single because he's got no pop but it's a nice picture so why in the hell did they think that this would be a good picture to put for me i just want to know i just want to have a talk with the guy what are we what is going on <laughs> Oh 
man. <laughs> <laughs> Neither picture is good. Neither one is good. Ah, oh, and I love it. It's his picture in the game. His face. <laughs> his face. <laughs> it's the low emote. <laughs> and I like. He's so mad. Imagine you get to that level of fame. And you're like in a video game, and they pick that for you. He's so upset. They did me dirty. Ah. Oh. <clears throat> um. Let me see. Let me see. So. Uh, that about does it for news. I do ha I do want to go ahead and say, uh, Casper, if you're watching, get well soon, brother, because uh, our boy Casper, you guys know, he's usually in here or usually a sub night, usually hanging out on Discord. Uh, he had some uh, breathing issues this morning and he ended up going into the hospital and he was diagnosed uh, uh, with uh, with coronavirus. So it sounds like he got in early. I have the utmost confidence that he's going to be fine. He's still young. And, uh, and they went in early and right now we don't have any, any, uh, uh, where he's at. It doesn't seem like it's an area where they're overburdened in the hospital. So I have, again, the utmost confidence that he's going to do fine. They're test. They're going to test them again. I think, I think once they test, uh, once they do one test and the symptoms line up, they're going to do another test and another test. So I think they keep on testing, uh, to soon. So yeah, so get well soon Casper, if you're watching. And of course, if you guys see him on Twitter or Instagram or, or, uh, or on um, on on Discord, then hit him up and just say, "Hey, man, I hope you're feeling better." He actually just just this morning he was talking about you know having a ribeye and a drink or something like that, like fuck today or something. And then <clears throat> not even hours later, you know, he hit me up and he was uh, you know he was kind of like, "Yo, check it out, I'm in the hospital." I was like, "Oh shit." Um, so yeah, I'm I'm he's gonna be fine. I have again almost confident he's gonna be he's gonna be fine, but uh, I wanted to go ahead and just say something for those of you guys kind of send up some get get well. Some get well, get wells. Cool. You guys do that? Do that for me. Um let me see. In closing, oxygen not included. If you're watching this on YouTube, YouTube folks, oxygen not included, the uh, uh first half of the season has ended already. Uh today, Friday, was the last day for the what was it, like a 50 episode run or something like that. Uh, for the first half, we got to a thousand cycles and then, uh, and then tomorrow, I'm sorry, uh, sometime this weekend or Monday, I'm going to try to get on and we're going to, we're going to start recording for the next, for the next half of the uh, season and continue going from there, uh, or for another chunk of the season, I should say, and then continue going from there. And so that's going to be really interesting because the last time I recorded was, I think February 13th or 14th or somewhere around there was the last time I recorded for, uh, the episode that aired today, Friday. Uh, so that was a long time ago, and so much has changed since then. So I'm looking forward to getting in and playing some more. And uh, yes, of course, tonight, tonight, uh, if you're in Discord, tonight we're going to be watching Idiocracy. So that's where you got to be. We can only have 50 people in there, which we haven't come close to hitting. So I think I'm sure we'll be fine. But uh, 9 o'clock. So that's about 4 hours and 20 minutes from now. Is that right? Four, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 9 o'clock. So four hours, 20 minutes from now, 4.20. So, <laughs> all right. So that's it for the news. Thank you so much for watching chat. Thank you so much for being here for me. Sorry I had to introduce Joe in there to kind of take you guys off the roster for just a minute, but you guys are back. You guys are good. Thank you so much for hanging out. YouTube, I'll see you guys more Oxygen Included soon. <sighs> Which one was that? <laughs>